And it's that like, I find so much anime just so goddamn boring now. I just find, it's not even about it being boring, it's just redundant. When I first heard the anime man saying this, I thought to myself, oh boy, he fell out of love with anime. Uh, yeah, good, good anime adaptation. Eight out of ten. I used to love watching anime man. I think my favorite thing about his channel was... So let's I thought it was hilarious, and I got a ton of anime recommendations from it. But not long after, he stopped making anime videos. If you go to his channel right now, you're not going to see much anime content. As much as I, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, miss the old anime man, I totally understand his departure from making anime content, and you will too in a second. Now, for you to get this, I gotta go back in time, but trust me, you wanna go back there because that's where the greatest anime are. In this video, I'm going to give you guys not 10, not 20, but 40 anime recommendations. By the end of this, you'll have more anime on your mouth watch list than you know what to do with. Not to mention like the totally new perspective you'll have on anime. Okay, why on earth are we in the 70s right now? Well, that's because this was quite literally the most legendary era for anime. But funny enough, there's not that many 70s anime we'd appreciate today. But you have got to look at this from the perspective of someone from that point in time. In the 60s, anime was simple. It was basically Japanese cartoons for kids. The 70s was the age when anime became more than a cartoon, and it came along with an immortal anime, Mobusu Gundam. I'll tell you this right now, Mobusu Gundam is an absolute must watch. It's aged remarkably well, so think about it. If Gundam is amazing now, imagine the impact it had in the 70s. There were a bunch of other mecha anime, just like Gundam, not to mention Ashita no Joe, Lupin III, and Captain Harlock. This era was the progenitor of anime as we know it. I wouldn't say the 80s was as important as the 70s for anime, but you might as well assume it is because it pushed further than the 70s did and brought us Dragon Ball, Akira, Hulk to no Ken, and the greatest anime of the 80s, and arguably the greatest anime of all time, Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Not to mention Studio Ghibli that pushed anime into the international scene with absolute masterpieces. We're talking about Kiki's Delivery Service, My Neighbor Totoro, and Grave of the Fireflies. These were legendary times. The 90s was pretty interesting too. And herein lies the anime that made me obsessed with anime, Rurouni Kenshin. It was 11am on a Sunday in the year 2002 when it first got aired, and I just so happened to catch it because, well, Sunday morning cartoons were just as important to me as Saturday morning cartoons. So there it was, the strange English dubbed animated series from Japan that delivered the most sophisticated animation and storytelling I'd ever watched. I never got to experience much else after Rurouni Kenshin because I just didn't have access to anime. In fact. I didn't even know what anime was, but when I got older, I did go back in time and watch everything I missed, and I can't tell you just how many remarkable anime were released in the 90s, but I will give you a list of 10 of my personal favorites, stuff you guys should definitely watch. Serial Experiment Slain, Berserk, Cowboy Bebop, Ghost in the Shell, Princess Mononoke, Trigon, Neon Genesis Evangelion, Dragon Ball Z, Great Teacher Onizuka, and my number one anime of all time, Master Keaton. The 2000s is my personal favorite anime era, and it's what really spurred me into making this video because I kind of feel that anime took a departure after the 2000s into simpler, more digestible anime. 2000s anime were philosophical, they really made you think and wonder. That's what I believe anime is all about. Anime was just this absurd thing that was way, way, way ahead of its time. I mean, that's what anime has always been from the start. It's always been the pinnacle of storytelling and creativity, and the 2000s completely embodied that. This is the age when anime was in its final form, its greatest capacity in terms of storytelling. My number one show from this era was Kino no Tabi, 
This is what I believe to be the flagship anime of the 2000s. Okay, look, I understand there's Monster, Code Geass, Death Note, and even Full Metal Alchemist, but Kino Tabi is special even among them, and I guess you might not understand until you watch it yourself. <laughs> The 2010s were different. Don't get me wrong, the 2010s were a phenomenal time, but I also feel that this might have been the beginning of a simpler time in anime. 2010s anime just had a lot less narrative depth, but at the same time, a lot more ability in terms of animation. Anime was bigger than ever, and it wasn't just this niche thing outside of Japan, but rather it was recognized around the world and respected, and there was ridiculous demand for it. And I believe therein lies the problem. The world wanted more Naruto, more Attack on Titan, more Jojo, more Boku no Hero and Baki. But no one sang of Kino no Tabi or Monster, Paprika, Mushishi, Legend of the Galactic Heroes, Spriggan, Beck, Tatami Galaxy, Jinro, and all the anime that the 70s, 80s, 90s, and the 2000s built on. And this just carried on to the 2020s, where we are now. So why did Joey, the anime man, stop watching anime? Well that's because anime isn't as inspiring anymore. I remember listening to Trash Taste some time ago and for the first time in a long while, Joey talked about an anime he actually watched. Yeah. So I was like, all right, perfect. I'll like refresh myself on Millennium Actress because I literally don't remember anything about it. F brilliant film. Millennium Actress by Satoshi Kon, an anime film that embodied anime at its finest and his favorite anime of all time, what do you think is the greatest anime ever made? I'll go first. It's a very difficult question, but short answer would probably have to be Serial Experiments Lane. Yes, it is a little more underground and kind of the pretentious anime fans pick, but I genuinely believe it is one of the most artistic and haunting experiences that you could ever feel from a piece of animation. It goes without saying that I don't think Serial Experiments Lane and half the anime I'm obsessed with would be made today. And thus, the anime man, and perhaps a lot of you watching this right now, feel there's an emptiness, a, a void in every season and every year, where before it was filled with a lot of meaning from all our favorite anime. Look, I'm not saying that anime sucks now and we should all pack our bags and go watch a movie or something. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Chainsaw Man was great, and so was Licorice Recoil and I'm currently pretty keen on Hell's Paradise. All I'm saying is, I would love to tune into something a little more than what we've been getting lately. And what we're getting lately is a lot of the same stuff because I assume anime studios have determined that's what works commercially. It really says a lot about anime. When all it takes is for me to read a synopsis, yeah. And yeah. I could probably tell you with 90% accuracy yeah. what the first three episodes of that anime is going to be about. Yeah. I don't think deep anime is dead and replaced with Isekai and Boku no Hero. Every now and then we get a villain saga and that's okay I guess. Bottom line, despite the fact that anime has changed to accommodate the world and its wants, I still think anime can't be beat. And it never will be. Japan, to me, is the land of humankind's greatest storytellers. And I don't think that's ever gonna change. And hey, we can always go back in time and find hidden gems buried and waiting to be experienced and more importantly, shared.